Hey everybody, it's Mariana with Three Peaks Classroom. If you are new to my channel, I am a grade three and grade four teacher here in Alberta, Canada, and I love to make helpful YouTube videos for other teachers just like you. Today's video, I wanna be talking about the very first unit in grade three science, which is matter. And I'm gonna show you the resource that I've created for it. And I'm gonna show you my book recommendations so that if you want to get ahead of the game, and if you want to either purchase or borrow these books from your local library, these are books that I've already scouted and I've looked at, and I will recommend what they would be good for in your classroom. Now, in last week's episode, I actually went over the brand new curriculum and I gave my thoughts on it, but I also shared with you important outcomes that you're going to need to hit in every single one of the units in grade three science. So if you are, flustered about what you need to teach in terms of grade three science, you should go back and watch that video so that you can get a better understanding of what is expected in grade three science for you this coming year. And just before I dive in showing you the books that I recommend, I do want to mention that I do have a resource available right now in my TPT store in case you are looking for something to get going when you start in September for your classroom. I have created a unit all about science matter for grade three. These are the teacher pages. It talks about what is included in this resource. What are the outcomes? I cover all of the outcomes in the first unit and as well some outcomes in the, the final unit as well, scientific method. And then this is the student package as well. So this is where all of the the important information and activities and interactive bits this is all included in the resource as well so if you are scrambling to find a resource for grade three science so that you can just get going in september this is available in my tpt shop i will leave a link in the description below so you can check it out all right let's move on to the books that i have found that are appropriate for this topic science matter i have kind of broken it up into two piles the first pile is books that you could use for like a read aloud so if you wanted to sit on the carpet and read the book out loud to your students and the second one is books that maybe students can use if they want to research a topic or something so i'm going to start with the read alouds because i think that's a lot of fun and i'm going to start off with my favorite one in this entire group. This book is so adorable. It is called When Cloud Became a Cloud. And I read this to my five-year-old daughter and she absolutely loved it. The book is from the perspective of a cloud and how it turns into a cloud. And it talks about how, you know, it talks about the water cycle. So the sun is warming up the water droplets. The water droplets are rising into the air and they, they turn into a cloud and the cloud is very happy. And then there's different chapters too. So now how does wind affect the clouds? And then where do storms come from? How does snow appear? It talks about every single aspect of the water cycle, fog and thunderstorms. It is just such a cute little story. You cannot teach the first unit matter and the water cycle without grabbing this book. It is adorable. So this book is called When a Cloud Became a Cloud and it's written by Rob Hodgson. Highly recommend that you grab this book for your classrooms. The second book that I want to recommend to you is called Drop An Adventure Through the Water Cycle by Emily Kate Moon. This is also a really great story that highlights the states of water and the water cycle and it has a lot of fantastic science terminology in the book, which is one thing that is, I don't want to say lacking because this book is a great book and it's my favorite out of the whole bunch. But if you want something that's a little bit more scientific, that would be this book as well. But don't, don't be confused. This is also a picture read aloud story as well. So I just think it does a really good job of um, explaining the different parts of the water cycle as well. And it just talks about more like in science terminology, you know, like how they bond together. It talks about watershed and things like that. So again, I don't think you could teach this unit without grabbing these two adorable read aloud books. I say adorable, but they're appropriate as well. It's not like it's like a kindergarten book. They are appropriate. <laughs> so you definitely need to grab those two books. This third book that I have included is a great addition to this unit as well. What is the world made of? All about solids, liquids, and gases. And it's written by Kathleen Widener Zofled. Sorry, Kathleen. Um, but this is a wonderful story. It's not a storybook. It's not, it doesn't have, um, doesn't have, it's not fictional. It's definitely nonfiction, but I like the way that it is written and presented. And I would definitely use this book as a read aloud to my students. I would read it out loud to them first. And then I would include this story in my book of books that, or in my pile of books that students can use to research as well. So if there is an assignment in their um, matter workbook that I have assigned them, then they could probably use this story 
to find um, some information as well. So highly recommend, of course, the pictures here are great and talks about the three states of matter as well. So highly recommend what is the world made of all about solids, liquids and gases, number three in my recommendations. This is book number four, and I'm not quite sure about this book because it says solids, liquids, gases and plasma, which is a new state of matter, but it's not something that we cover in our grade three science. So I was a little hesitant about including this because I don't want to confuse my students. But at the same time, it's a great springing off point or like it's a great um, investigative point. So the students can wonder about, well, why is plasma included? So they can also think about that as well. But this is also a picture book that I would use to read out loud to my students. I would honestly, I would just skip the part about plasma because I don't want to confuse my students, but any keen readers out there, they are able to pick up the book and they can read it about plasma if they want as well. But again, this does a really, really great job of talking about solids, liquids, and gases. And there's a glossary at the end as well, which I love and it gives them a little sneak peek into molecular chemistry there. So Anyways, I would use this story as a read aloud and then I would include it as well in my book of, in my pile of books to research. Okay, now these are the books that I have set aside. These are not books that I would use for a read aloud, but I would have these books available in my classroom. I'm gonna start with my preferred book out of these two. So this is a look at chemistry, states of matter, and this is um, an easy reader for students if they want to read a little bit more about the states of matter. I think the, the wording in here is appropriate for this age. And it also has really good imagery as well. So again, it gives them very, very visual um, representations of gas, liquids, and solids. And I would use this, here they include plasma, plasma as well. I would use this as well in my, in my classroom in case the students had to research something. This would definitely be a book that I would have available to them. Um, but we can also use this book to talk about text features like glossary, table of contents, things like that. But I highly recommend this book, States of Matter by Mary Griffin. Um, yeah, I would use this in my class. The last book that I have here is not one that I maybe would really recommend. I have here uh, Science Explorers, Matter and Materials. Okay, the reason why I wouldn't recommend it is because there's a lot of information in this book that doesn't pertain to matter, but the first few pages do. And the first few pages are really, really important and relative. So the very first um, couple pages talks about phases of matter. Now there is a lot of information on here. So this is a book that I would definitely read alongside a student because there's a lot of information and a lot of um, vocab, but it has here solid materials, liquids and gases. And then after that, it goes into information that's not applicable to students right now in the class. But again, you never know what interests a student. So this might be something that they look at. Oh, here's rocks and minerals. You can use this for your later units as well. Um, but yeah, so if I would use if I would use this book, then I would post it note the pages that are appropriate for the students that are relative to the unit that I'm teaching. So there you go. If you are looking for books for your classroom in order to teach about the very first unit in grade three science, which is matter, these are the books that I recommend that you grab for your classrooms. If you want no other book recommendation except these two, that would be okay because these are fun books, but they're also educational as well. And this one is just my absolute favorite. So this one I highly recommend. I also get no kickback from these. I'm not an Amazon affiliate or anything like that. This is just one educator to another so that you are prepared in September with some books for your classroom for this science unit. I hope you found this video helpful. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any other book recommendations that I have coming up on my channel. And also you might want to hit that notification bell. I do like to post a new video every Sunday so that way you don't miss it. Thanks again, everybody. Hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.